Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's Residio webinar session, where we are going to cover our an overview of our Red Link thermostats and our accessories. My name is Jamie Quanrude, and I'm part of the Residio sales training team. And on behalf of us on the call today, I'd like to welcome you to our training session. And before we get started with our technical overview, I'm going to cover just a few administrative items. Make sure that you join us each month as we provide you two opportunities to learn about our Residio products. Going forward, we are going to be offering these webinars on the second and the fourth Tuesdays of each month. Please make sure that you visit residio.com backslash webinars for more information on these sessions. Coming up on February 9th, we are going to be featuring a training on our combustion products and how our source training can really help you and your technicians with their knowledge of our universal parts products. And then on the 23rd of February, of February we are going to review our hydronic portfolio and we'll also be giving you a preview of our new water products that we are releasing in March. So make sure that you register and attend those upcoming sessions. We're really excited to talk with you about our source training as, as well as sharing the details of our new water products with you as well. Additionally, if you do register for a training session and you are not able to attend the live session, you can also find recordings of these sessions on the same website underneath the webinar recordings tab as well. For our contractors who are joining us for today's live session and you are interested in earning one NATE continuing education credit, there are just a few things to note. If you provided your NATE ID on your registration form, we submit that information to Nate for your attendance of today's live session, and we won't need any additional information from you at this time. However, if you did not provide us with your Nate ID on your registration form for this webinar and you would like to receive credit for attending the live session, then we do ask that you email your first name, your last name, your Nate ID, and the date of the session you attended to homes.university at residio.com within one week from today. We do submit this information to Nate one week following the close of each session. Any requests that are sent outside of one week from the live training cannot be processed. And as a reminder, we can only process requests for NATE credits when you attend the live webinar sessions, and we are unable to process requests for watching a recorded version of this session. If you'd like more information about the NATE program, please visit their website at www.natex.org. And then one quick note for everyone before we begin our presentation. All of our attendees are muted today. However, if at any point you do have a question during our presentation today, please go ahead and use that Q&A feature that's found in your Zoom webinar controls. We are reserving the last few minutes of our time today to answer any questions that you may have. So as we progress through our training and there's something you have a question on, be sure to ask that question in that Q&A feature so that we can address address it at the end of today's session. We love hearing from you and we love answering your questions. So please ask away if there are any questions you have on our Red Link products and accessories. Now we're gonna turn over the presentation to John Battaglia, who is one of our Residio distributor sales reps on the East Coast. We're glad to have John here with us today to share his knowledge of our Red Link thermostat portfolio. We're gonna hand things over to you, John. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. So those who don't know me, my name is John Battaglia, and I'm here to help you out today. I want to set you up here. We're going to discuss our Red Link portfolio, but more importantly, I want to give you some background information of, of where we build onto and where are the best opportunities for, the, for Red Link to assist you in your business and also to uh, solve both simple and complex problems that we as technicians run into on the daily basis. So in general, um, Residio and the Honeywell Home brand has a, a exclusive portfolio to covering all kinds of different ways of connecting our homes now to, to our lives, where traditionally in the past, we react to our homes and now our homes are starting to react to how we live. And that's the way of the future and that's the way we are now. Um, so kind of looking through here, we have 
everything from very simple Wi-Fi, which basically you can turn them on and off remotely from your phone, to be able to integrating with Z-Wave and then the Red Link technology. So if you look here, we have a pretty an extensive portfolio. Now, why would you want to choose Honeywell Home and the Residio brands for your connected opportunities? And really is our products are very easy to use. They're very accurate. We, we pride ourselves on that capability that our controls can, can perform its tasks accurately. And we actually go within plus or minus one, you know, one degree. Um, we have a nearly universal application and I'll kind of discuss what does that really mean, but think of it pretty much whenever you go into any situation, we have a product that will be able to solve what you're looking for. Minimal callbacks from years. Um, I think we're in our 160 some year of, of, of this technology and you know, we'll continue on. So um, we relay that into minimal callbacks and then basically retrofitting options that fulfill existing homes all over. So while we've been on the wall for a long time, in addition to, so it's very easy to integrate and come back to and upgrade. And I'll discuss that in a moment. So first you're gonna ask, okay, what is a what is communication protocol? We throw a lot of words around, um, but really let's get it down to this, is that communicating is systems well, um, well-defined formats. So traditionally in a, in, a, in a system, we have a thermostat on the wall, wires run down to the equipment. When you're hot or cold, or we want it to turn to air conditioning to heat, you go to the thermostat face and you touch it, make it go up and down, on, off. Very simple. But things have changed as things get more and more complicated. Um, there's lots of different ways to now perform that function and a lot of technologies that you can use to do that, whether it's your phone or interacting with it or geofencing. There's a lot of different technologies out there and different trends. So the three main ways of communicating protocol are, is Redlink is our internal wireless technology, what I'll discuss today. Um, Wi-Fi, which we use is basically using the internet to be able to communicate with our HVAC equipment. And then Z-Wave, which uh, Z-Wave is a radio type signal that's used to integrate home automation, traditionally within a security sense, where everything kind of links together using a hub. So here again, I'm just gonna talk to you real quick. So network access, Redlink is proprietary to Residio, and that's where everything talks together. Wi-Fi, you can take a bunch of different ones as an open protocol, and it's just using the Wi-Fi signal in the, in the space to, to communicate. And then Z-Wave is also open protocol, but you need a hub system to work it out. So just understanding these three basic things, we're going to discuss how Redlink works today. Go back, as uh, Jamie mentioned earlier, you can go back and look at some of our other webinars that we've had over the uh, recent months and go back and take a look at our, you know, Wi-Fi thermostat offering and our Z-Wave. We have a very, very nice portfolio and those things mesh in really well. So what is Redlink? Okay. Think of it this way. It's like Bluetooth for your house. Okay. Maybe we have a, a host system that can talk wirelessly to a bunch of different um, accessories and be able to control all kinds of different things without the need for running wires. It optimizes the system. It's a closed network protocol, so everything talks directly to it and it won't be interfered with by other things going on in the space. And it's extremely reliable. It actually involved from our security business and knowing that whenever you're in, in security, when you're talking to different things, you, you don't want anything to interrupt that. And it works out really, really well for what we do and the complexity of the communication back and forth and actually doing it wirelessly. Um, operates on a 900 megahertz frequency, which makes it you know, safe there, and then also gives us great robust and range. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on what range means and different materials and buildings. Uh, but know that this is a very robust system that can handle all those different things. I'm over here in the east, we routinely see houses that maybe are even older than the country that we all live in. And knowing going through things like stone and, and all those different building materials is very, it's very good and you'll find out how well it works. So I'm just going to kind of look here. If you look in our house, just got to give you an idea of all the opportunities that Redlink gives to you. So Redlink, the, the biggest advantage I see to it um, with Redlink is your ability to quote out jobs and do them at a labor rate um, versus running wires and in the evasiveness of when retrofitting and adding wires to the house. Plus also the labor cost of having multiple technicians on the job. In the case of Redlink system, a single technician can do the entire no matter what they walk into almost on their own because it's a very simple linking process. 
uh, going through our house here, we can, it can be as simple as, you know, um, you, you start with your 8,000 thermostat that's moving here in the middle and that becomes your host. And then all these other accessories that I'll kind of go through are accessories that you can link wirelessly and it's very simple and it's done pretty simple. Um, go so it, use it that way. You can add things like, you know, vent boosting to ventilation, your ability to, to average using indoor sensors, collecting data outside for outside temperature for dual fuel scenarios and, and visibility, um, and then being able to actually access it using your phone. And the final piece, which is a really nice addition that we've had to Red Link is the equipment remote module. And that as it goes outside and that gives you the capability of, hey, you've, the customer went from a simple you know, air conditioning scenario and now moving to a heat pump, you went from having two wires to needing eight or, or more. This is very simple. You'll link the two together and will not need to run the wires out. Very, very nifty device. So why is Red Link reliable? We use a, basically we're using like an FM type um, radio signal that, that can project. And um, there's no two signals that are the same. So it allows you to, they won't have interference with other red links. So say you're doing multiple red links in multiple buildings, or even within the same building, you won't have to worry about that, that once the host and its accessory learn each other, when they're signaled, they're, they're paired together until you decide that it's, that it's not. And it's very reliable. And we have the ability to transmit that signal through a variety of building materials, thick or not. Um, and there's also actually ways that you can check the signal prior to doing the install. And then the data is reliably and, and securely communi communicated back and forth between all the different systems. Here are some of our RedLink accessories, and I'm just giving you some part numbers here to, to take note of. The RedLink Internet Gateway, which throughout the rest of the presentation we refer to as the RIG, uh, is that on the top um, right-hand side of the screen. Your equipment remote module is here starting to the left. That's a really, really nice device. Um, it can be used for you know heat pump applications, boiler moves, and basically anywhere. It's waterproof and can go outside rooftops and then you're allowed to do that and all that needs is power and then it'll sync back to either a thermostat or equipment interface module as the second device there the the EIM and that gives us a lot adds more flexibility to our thermostat offerings the portable comfort control is a really nifty device in the fact that you can it's almost like carrying a thermostat in your pocket you want to move to a room that that um you know traditionally has, gets cold or hot and you don't use very often go ahead and take it with you and you can basically make that your point of control. Uh, the wireless outdoor sensor, um, which is you know used for things like dual fuel and bringing in that outdoor temperature set point. Take a note on this one here, um, the wireless outdoor sensor is good for up to 16 thermostats. So you won't need to put an outdoor sensor on every one if you've got multiple in the house or, or building, particularly when you're doing zoning. Uh, the wireless indoor sensor, the C7189R, can be good. And in the Red Lake system, you can add up to six of those. And then we have some other accessories listed here, like the wireless vent boost and in, you know, entry exit, some things that are that are more niche type products, but we do have a lot that can go on there. So the Red Link Internet Gateway, which is referred to as the rig, this is a device that's very simple. And what it's what its job is is that once you've had this system in and you've got the house all set up. Or, or building all set up, then you can now access that information can be transmitted through what the internet understands and use your phone or laptop or, or whatever device to control uh, what's going on, whether it's changing the heat, turning air conditioning on off, everything that you wanna see what's going on in the house now is visible right there on your personal device laptop. Um, package includes the gateway itself. It's a three foot internet cable. Uh, Ethernet cable, so it plugs right in the back of the router. What's really nice for this is if you know that Wi-Fi signals can be spotty in um, in a building or in a house, and you have that drop on and off, that won't occur here in the Red Link because this will go directly into the using the Ethernet cable. So if you ever get that situation, I'll give you an excellent example. Um, there was a financial company that was using a converted house for their business, and they wanted Wi-Fi um, capability on their thermostats, but their firewalls became too complex for you know for the therm for a regular traditional Wi-Fi thermostat. 
switching to red link and using the rig plugging right into the Ethernet system was never a problem again. So there's a lot of things when you get into that customer and says, hey, look, I love having Wi-Fi, but it drops in and out. This is one of your options. So we're gonna move on here and I'm gonna start building through the portfolio on our thermostat offerings. And I'm gonna start with our most simple and then moving up to more complex problem solving type. And the first one we're gonna start here is with our Focus Pro 5000. This is a non-programmable. This is really great when you have someone that says, okay, thermostat's located in a, in a terrible location in the house and they just simply want to move it, okay? You, one of your options is running new wires, going through walls, everything like that. Or in the case of the Focus Pro and Red Link, this is a, a battery powered option. Simply locate the thermostat in whatever room you want it to be, connect it down to the equipment wirelessly using the module or inter, interface, equipment interface module, and you're done. And then it's all set up to go, okay? We have two kits. Kits are great because they save you some money when you're doing and, ha and include everything you need to do the job. Um, you could also piece it out, but the kits are really nice. We have two of them here, and the main difference is, is that one comes with the gateway, which make you ready to go for, for um, Wi-Fi access, and the other one does not. So that's the YTH5320R1116 and the 5320R1000. Okay, moving up, your next step here, same as before, we give you the 6,000 options. Same, very typical situation here of yet again, moving a thermostat. This is your best option for doing that, but now you have a programmable option, which is 511 and 52. You can handle up to three heats, two cools, or two heat, two cool conventional. And we have three kits, the most popular being the YTH6320R114. That gives you basically everything you really need you know, to go. If you're doing a, um, a dual fuel scenario, you can add the outdoor sensors and indoor sensors. All right, now, what's, now we're gonna move on to the 8000. I'm gonna show you a lot because this is truly our workhorse system within our family of Red Link products. And it is the, it's called the Vision Pro 8000. For those who are familiar with the Wi-Fi version, that is the one with WF in the title, but there is a difference. They look the same, but there is a dramatic difference in its ability too. So going over, we have three models, uh, most popular being the TH8321R1001. The main difference here is that it has internally has a terminal for indoor air quality control and can handle you know, one of those devices. And then later I'll explain how you can move it up to three. But this is a really strong thermostat, um, three heats, two cools. We have a, a 8320R, which is the same thermostat, except for it does not have indoor air quality control. And then the 8110 is a great option when dealing with zoning and I'll kind of get to that later. If you add the EIM, the, in, the equipment interface module, we can add up to four heats and uh, two cools and three heats, two cools, but the force cooling is um, stage becomes available for our light commercial um, applications. What really makes the Vision Pro 8000 a really strong option is it has a lot of flexibility and can really solve a lot of things that are going on. Plus it's both for residential use and um, light commercial. It's easy to set up. We've written in plain language. As soon as you need something to do, you, you can ask it, it'll give you the answer. Um, it's quick to set up. And if you've set one up before and you got multiples on a job, very easy, just plug in a micro SD card and you can take that and, and preload them all up. I have lots of customers that'll do that back at the shop before they go out. And then all the, the technician on the job site needs to do is just you know, hook it up. Uh, On-screen instructions are great. It'll lay it out just like is in the book. There's a help button on there. You hit the help button and it'll explain exactly what you're doing. And you really have really fast um, installation times and it definitely reduces setup errors. So let's take a look at a, um, a, at a, of a couple typical applications of where you can do that. Now I'm gonna remember, take note here on the 8,000 is that 8,000 has the, both the ability to be the host of our signal and an accessory. And that's really important to notify because it depends on where you got wires, particularly in a retrofit situation. Say, okay, I've got plenty of wires to the thermostat, but I need to add averaging sensors. I need to bring in an outdoor sensor and I don't have that capability. 
Very simple, you would set up your 8,000 as the host when you're doing your setup and then adding whatever accessories you need. So in this scenario here, you got plenty of wires down to the furnace and out to the air conditioning unit, but you need to do some cer certain things to make the house a little bit more comfortable. You can add a PCC or um, an indoor sensor. In this case, you can add, here's the rule of thumb for our averaging of our indoor sensors for Redlink is, you can use five if you use the thermostat face itself as a temperature and humidity sensing point. If you decide that you don't wanna use that, you can do six. And what that'll do is it'll average all of the, of the indoor sensors and it'll run the system appropriately. You can also, um, and what that'll do is the averaging here, but you don't need to apply Ohm's law. And that's really a time saving uh, and technology um, advantage. Plus, because they're battery operated, um, there's, there's no evasiveness to the house. You're not pulling anything, you're not running wire, huge time and labor saver um, there. In addition to, you can add your Red Link Internet Gateway and your Boost and your PCC. And then you can also do the ERM. Say you needed to convert this air conditioner to a heat pump, no problem. Sync them together, you're in great shape. So let's look at another scenario with an EIM, okay? In this EIM, now we've added more and more possibilities. Like I told you, you can go up to those three heat two cools and in a light commercial application, four heats, four cools, but we can add multiple indoor air quality devices. And what's really nice there is you do all that wiring in one spot. You, you pull your wires off of your equipment, you bring in your humidifier, dehumidifier and ventilator, all go right in there, done, that becomes the host. And then everything else that you wanna add or subtract, you can go ahead and do that. What's really nice is you can actually sit in the utility room, do your wiring and set all your stuff and then you take them out. No need to go out and like hang the uh, outdoor sensor and then have to run all the way back. You can carry it out there. It's, it's really, really nice. Here's an example with zoning. So we have another class um, where we actually go over the red link zoning, but keep in mind that the rules apply. The zoning board, um, can be wired into running to all of your dampers and stuff like that. And then you can add the 8,000 in this scenario completely wires because it can operate on batteries in addition to 24 volts. So pretty nice, please stay, stay in touch with us on that and, and look up for our zoning, a uh, really, really nice class. And I think you'll, um, you'll learn a lot for a little bit more than we have time for today. Uh, using um, dry contacts in the 8,000, um, here's just some examples um, that are used, you know, full drain pan alerts, dirty filter alerts, water leak alerts, if you have it hooked up to either a wet switch or one of our um, water leak detectors that's available from, from Residio, um, shutdown alerts, um, service needed, fan failure, and then you can add a couple of uh, custom alerts as well. So universal um, outputs, if you're using just the thermostat 8000 itself, you get one in that scenario where you can hook up um, however you want to use it, whether it's one humidifier or dehumidifier ventilation. You can use it also for cooling stage three and conventional heat stage three, and then backup for, um, for heat pumps plus geothermal heat. So very flexible control, but really, it really can expand it when you add the equipment interface module, which is listed there. And, and um, you can see the list there. So humidification, you actually do all three at once, in addition to the adding the additional stages and the, and the geothermal. The micro SD card, again, I mentioned this earlier, very simple, do all your setup back at the office, do everything like, and get it all set up and ready to go. And then all it needs to do is they're all set up. And I can't tell you, I have a number of contractors that I work with that, that do this on the routine particularly in, in, in projects with multiple stats. What also is really nice is you can also add your dealer information as well that way. Uh, if you go to um, forwardthinking.honeywellhome.com, look up thermostats and setup, go right there, put all your information in, and then you can automatically do it. This is also part of our private label program. I'll mention that in a minute, that you can availability there for you to add that printed actually on the face of the 8,000. Um, custom reminders. This is pretty nice. You can put in there a preset. We have some that are preset and then you can customizable ones as well. You can set up a, a total of, of 10 and advertisements. Depends on how you wanna work your business, but you know, adding false service reminders and warranties. And what'll happen there is the red light will come on when it's time for an alert. They'll press the screen and it'll tell them, hey, 
it's time to check or your filter, so on and so forth. Please call ABC Heating and Air. Here's the number. It's all right there, and it's it's um very helpful. Light commercial features, like I said, I told you earlier, this is flexible. Once you tell it to be a light commercial setup, then the, the, you know there's lots of possibilities. With temporary over, override um, setting range stops, you can lock the, the keypad. You can also do something which I thought is interesting too, is like a semi-locked on this thermostat as well, where if you want to, you can set the range as saying, okay, no matter what they do, um, in the space, I can move it up or down two degrees, three degrees. You can set that, which is really, really nice. And then, then that, that gives them some control, but not total control over the thermostat. Um, you got holiday and custom event schedules that can be also done. A lot of in a light commercial, where particularly with multiple thermostats, multiple buildings, they can set up their scheduling to know that okay, the store won't be opened after uh, four o'clock on the night before Thanksgiving and know that they'll be unoccupied until Saturday. All those different things are there and it's really um, good, particularly from a building management perspective, and then also controls economizers um, as well. Now let's moving on to one of my favorite thermostats and actually the one that really gives you the greatest flexibility in your business and it's the Prestige IAQ. And um, this is a stat that we kind of call like your, it's, it's basically, it's, it's the one that can get you out of the most and take care of the most things. And it's really, um, a slick system here. It does both residential and light commercials before it's a four heat, two cool, three heat, two cool, but I mean, four heat, four cool in a, um, in a, a commercial setting, able to, to, um, control three indoor air quality devices. It does diagnosis, has dry contact alerts and performance logs. And think of it this way, every house or building you go into has at least two wires. So knowing that remember what you're gonna go up and then gives you the flexibility that in the future, adding on other things can be done very, very simply. Okay, comes in a kit, um, it's the YTH-X9421R5085, um, comes with what you see here. And then we can also have a bunch of different ones um, adding mix and match. And what that does is basically save you from doing it a la carte. Okay, um, a little bit more here on the on the contents here, and the real kit that probably gives you the most bang for your buck is this YTH9421R7001. In there, you got the thermostat face, the EIM, you get a Red Link Internet Gateway, a single outdoor sensor, a single indoor sensor, and two duct sensors for diagnostics. Very nice setup. But knowing if you have one of those on your truck, no matter when you make that call, everything you need will be there for you. Okay, the Prestige as well is nice in the fact that it's got a full color screen. You can change it to match um, the color scheme in the, in the house, whether it's wallpaper, paint, um, pretty nice, looks really, really sharp. Little training thing for you to know that um, in order to keep that burning in on the screen that you can see with some of our competitors, around two o'clock in the morning, it will shut down. It's still operating everything. And then it'll just basically refreshes itself and comes back up. Usually you learn that about the first service call and then um, you know that it, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, Prestige Delta T alerts and diagnostics. Um, taking you to the next level of ability to be pre, uh, you know, preemptive as opposed to reactive, like we are where the system's down. So the Prestige has the ability to do diagnosis. You can do some guesswork up ahead. And then when something is not right, it'll get the customer either to contact out to you to come out and do it before we have a complete shutdown. And it ensures the system is operating efficiently. I and mean, you look for things like low refrigerant, dirty burners, dirty filters, um, you know, the running too cold, too hot, bad connectors, really lets you get out there before you have a catastrophic breakdown. In addition to, Yet again, before this is use USB, so you can do it the same thing as as before when when pre setting up. And in addition to, you can add your dealer's logo directly um, to the stat, and it'll show up, which is pretty um, pretty nice. Okay, let's go yet again. More universal inputs. We give you S1, S2, S3, and S4. Um, allows you to do a bunch of different things like that. One really nice feature with the Prestige is is if you have a um, uh, you know, wet switch or a leak detector is has the ability that if um, a leak occurs, say to your humidifier, 
it, it senses that leak and it'll shut the humidifier off and allow the system to operate, which um, like I said, can be super helpful and allows you to keep your customer up and running until you can resolve um, the issue. Okay, again, we use dry, compact, dry contacts as our preferred way. And you get your full pan alerts, dirty filter alerts, and so on and so forth. And then you have your ability to customize. Now let's talk about the universal outputs, okay? Which allows us to do a couple of different things. And this is really some, some great ability. So you can wire a um, humidifier, uh, dehumidifier and ventilator all together. You also have another nice um, feature in the fact if you don't have a, uh, a dehumidifier set up, it will have the ability to run the system to dehumidify, um, which is pretty slick. So it gives you that extra capability in addition to the ability to run um, geothermal radiant heat. And then there's a lot of flexibility on your options, including you know, floor, radio. There's a lot of things that it, it can handle. It really gives you the flexibility to handle any kind of uh, situation that you run into and then control it very, very well. Okay, moving on to the T10. Um, we're gonna be brief on this. This is our newest thermostat to the Redlink portfolio. There's um, if you look into our new LMS system, you can go into a greater deep dive on the T10. I'm going to stick to how the sensors work today, but know that the T10 is really our first venture into bringing in both Wi-Fi and Redlink into the same thermostat. And I'll show you how we're going to do that, plus giving you a lot of flexibility in the house to take care of some things. So um, it's the THX 321 WFS 2001. What comes in there is the thermostat and the universal wall mounting system that you're familiar with with our T-series. Uh, in addition to you receive one of the um, wireless um, 3.0 indoor temperature sensors, which do both temperature, all three, temperature, humidity, and motion sensing. Uh, the thermostat without a sensor is available as well. And um, the kit for um, indoor sensors is comes in a pack of two and you can add up to 20 sensors to the system. So it's pretty pretty sharp from that perspective. So what is its capability? Three heats, two cool, uh, two heat, two cool conventional, dual fuel, we have auxiliary lockout and then dehumidification, humidification and ventilation. And then I'll throw one minute more in for you. It can also run the system to dehumidify. So it kind of gives you a one and a half from my perspective. And then you can also tell it specifically in the case of humidification, what type of humidifier are you using? Is it, is it um, electrode? Is it a bypass? And therefore it can get the most economical use out of that um, indoor air quality device. But the real meat of it is, comes in the wire, Redlink 3.0 wireless indoor sensors. These are very nifty sensors. Um, they have the capability of measuring temperature, humidity, and motion. And what it'll do is you can, you can set priority either from averaging or directly to a room. So put the sensors in the room um, and then you, you basically your house starts reacting to how you move throughout it. Um, and you can add up to 20 of these sensors for thermostats. So in the case of our traditional red link stats, you can do six. Here you have the ability to add 20. Setup is very, very simple. You set the language. Uh, tell it where it is. We also have customizable. So you can say it's in a bedroom. You can actually name it Bill's bedroom and Sally's and also the other names, family room, stuff like that all can be set up. While doing it, it'll tell you, hey, here's where you want to place the sensor, uh, interior wall about five feet off the wall. And then once the sensor is added, it's there. And then you can always go back later. So say the average customer installs, you know, when their first time around just one and says, hey, I really want to add more. Sensors are very easily added in the future. Uh, the sensors are connected either using a screw or actually comes with the um, uh, the command strips on the back, the two side tape and won't damage so it makes it easier for um, you know setting up here. And here's what they look like on the face of the thermostat once you have it. You can do priority in two different ways. Selective rooms is which is where you would tell it directly what you want it to do. Right now I'm in the living room and family room and it'll run the system until the average of the um, temperatures hit the set point. And also run your humidifier based on the average of the relative humidity setting. And if they want to do active rooms, which is really nice, there is an occupancy sensor in, this, in the sensor as well, and it can pick up. So once someone over 80 pounds 
has entered a room for longer than five minutes, it'll make that room active. And it'll stay that way until five minutes of inactivity has occurred. So it's really great for our, taking care of those rooms in the house that, that are common complaints. Um, the bedroom gets cold at two o'clock in the morning. Put the sensor in there, it'll run and make sure because that is a common problem that happens through a lot of houses. A really nifty, 80 pounds is great because you know that you don't want kids running, your kids run back and forth or dogs, animals, all the other stuff are not affected. So you have the active room capability. In addition, like I mentioned earlier, you have access to uh, indoor air quality control. Now the T10 is a fully wired system with the exception of the sensor. So you would run your wires down to your dehumidifier, ERV or humidifier, set it up and you're pretty simple, ready to go. All of our thermostats, um, right now we're gonna talk about for the case of the T10 operate on a 2.4 megahertz or five range. In the case of the T10, you will not need a gateway um, for this. It's already internal. So that's our first avenue of having both in the one. All the other ones, if you wanna take all the other Red Link devices to uh, internet access, you would have to add the, the rig. In addition to the T10 has capabilities of geofencing, um, which is a really nice feature, which basically says, hey, I'm either home or not based on the circle. And then um, the, the last phone or device that's assigned to the thermostat leaves the circle, the home backs down. And then when the first one to come back in, we'll bring it back up. Very, very energy efficient. Honey, here at Honeywell Home in Residio, we pride ourselves in the ability to um, have an open protocol and allow us to use a variety of different um, ways to connect your home. Why is this good for your business? Because choosing a Honeywell Home product, you don't have to worry about what phone is in their in their pocket today, much less what's going to happen five years from now. We have a protocol that's set up that allows us to work with everybody. Um, today, you can do sync it up very easily with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant plus another. I think the last we looked, there's 400 and some different ways of home automating your uh, your house. We will work with them all and it's actually a very, very simple process. So yet again, no need to ask the customer what they have or what they will have and won't need to change equipment for your HVAC system because the newest thing has come down, down the pike. Uh, T10 has the ability for on-screen dealer information. This can be actually done one of two ways. Um, we, uh, the first is you can put in your contract, your pro perks number and it'll automatically populate um, in the case of like Dan's plumbing. It's great for repeat business. You can also order with your distributor, pre-set up your information in the T10, um, which is really, really nice new process that's opened up and they'll take care of it. It'll come right out of the box with your information already in the thermostat. In addition to all of our products are part of our private, um, the Residio private label program. Please reach out to your distributor. They'll help you get that all set up. Uh, it's very slick. We don't use stickers, so it prints right on. It looks really sharp, migrates in, um, and your customer will know exactly who to call when they need you, and it's a very um, good. We have no volume commitments, and they're minimum order quantity, so please reach out to your distributor. They'll help you through the process, and um, you'll be all set. Thanks so much, right John. We appreciate you walking us through that overview on our Red Link thermostat and accessories. We're gonna transition now to answering some common questions that our sales team does hear about our Redlink products that we reviewed today in our session. We're gonna have Sean Sullivan join John today to help answer some of these questions. Sean is one of our contractor development specialists in the Pennsylvania market. He's gonna join and help answer some of these questions. We have gotten a lot of questions over the past uh, 40 minutes or so. So as a quick reminder, if you do have questions on anything that was reviewed today, go ahead and take a few moments and enter that information into the Q&A feature that you can find in your Zoom controls. And we are gonna do our best to answer all the questions that we have today, even if we have to run over just a few minutes, we do wanna make sure that we get to your question. So with that, gentlemen, take it away. All right, Sean, welcome to the uh, program. Thanks, John, and thank you, Jamie. All right, so Sean, can you connect more than one thermostat to an EIM? So the answer there is no. Um, the, the thermostat and EIM, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So one thermostat per equipment interface module. Okay. Can Renlink 
can Red Link do dual fuel? Yeah, absolutely. So as long as you've got, um, you know, a dual fuel thermostat, um, which a lot of our Red Link thermostats are capable of doing, um, just just be mindful. Like we do have a Red Link Vision Pro 8000 that's a one heat, one cool that cannot do dual fuel. Um, the three heat, two cool models can, as well as the Prestige IEQ. Um, that one heat, one cool 8000 that's Red Link capable, you you pair it up with the equipment interface module, and that's a different story that changes it to a 42 cool if it's connected to an EIM. Um, and, and we can use either a hardwired outdoor air sensor for our balance point or certainly add the Red Link outdoor air sensor. Great. So is an outdoor sensor needed for each thermostat? Another good question. If you're using a wired outdoor sensor, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You're adding the labor of getting that sensor outside. Typically, you want it in a north wall in the shade. Um, that's not always accessible. So we can go with the Redlink outdoor air sensor. It's completely wireless, and it's not only going to provide you outdoor temperature, but it also gives you outdoor humidity. And that thermostat, because it's wireless, you can put it on you know, anywhere on, on the outside. So it's really easy to get that north wall in the shade and it can connect to up to 16 thermostats from one Red Link outdoor air sensor. Yeah, can that also be used on a Red Link uh, zone panel? Absolutely. Um, you know, especially if you're doing dual fuel, which touches on that other question. If you've got a dual fuel situation and you got an HC 432, uh, as long as you have the THM 4000 antenna, which we did get a question in the chat about that, we'll want to talk about, um, you can use the wireless outdoor sensor to our Zoom panel as well. Oh, great. And then um, how many sensors can you put on the T10? Beauty of the T10, we can go any range from one up to 20. So, um, you know, in the past with like the Redlink 8000, you could be any range one to six. And when you added them, it was always averaging whatever you added. The T10, again, any number one to 20, and you can select different times a day to prioritize the different sensors or a combination of sensors and average throughout the day. Um, and while we're on the topic of the T10, the next question here I'd like to ask you, John, is uh, what frequency will the T10 run off of? That's a great question and, and comes up actually a lot. So it can run off of both a 2.4, um, megahertz process or I mean Wi-Fi router or the five. So you have your flexibility there, which is, is really, really nice. I want to add on to that, that the Red Link ones, uh, traditional 2.0 Red Link won't use the frequency. It actually uses an ethernet cable that goes into the back. So you're not worried about needing to have a, a signal split uh, based on what the homeowners have for Wi-Fi. Perfect. And then um, another question revolving around the, the frequency and the Wi-Fi connection of the T10. Because it's um, a touchscreen display, can you connect to the Wi-Fi with the, using the thermostat, or do you need a phone to get the thermostat on the Wi-Fi network? That's a really good question. You actually have your choice. Um, probably the preferred way is to do it right from the thermostat. It's probably pretty simple, but also for those that are aware that of our contractor mode in the in the phone from the Honeywell Home app, which is a another class that we teach that you can do both ways. So you have flexibility to choose which way is optimal for you and your customer. Okay. And, and um, while still on the topic of T10, will that work with previous Redlink accessories since we mentioned now it's it's a Wi-Fi stat that also has Redlink 3.0 in it? Yet again, another really good question. The short-term answer for that is no. So all the ones that are Redlink 2.0, whether it's the, um, the Focus Pros, the Vision Pro 8000 or Prestige, all those use their own accessories. Um, T10 right now only uses the 3.0 signal. So currently we have just the sensors, the occupancy sensor, temperature and humidity, but know in the future that though those other accessories will become available for 3.0 technology. 3.0 technology is also really good because that'll gives us flexibility to add more things in the future that we can never think of today. So that's where we're, we're going with that. So stay tuned, we have some nifty stuff coming down down the pike for that. Okay, great. And then um, speaking of indoor sensors, uh, how many can I have on a Redlink system? So on the um, Redlink 2.0, you can have up to least five of you use the thermostat face, six if you don't. And then in the case of the um, outdoor sensor, it's 16 
you can you can you can um, well you'd only need one for every 16 systems or thermostats perfect yeah and then when, when you add those one to six they're always in the mix of averaging um whereas still in the t10 you again you can prioritize different times of day which one you're looking at. Yeah. One thing I'd like um, to add on that indoor sensor, um, Sean, mm -hmm. is that you yeah. can also use it for a dedicated humidity sensor, like say a crawl space to run just a dehumidifier or something like that in, in certain parts of the house. If you wanted it to do that, you can notify one to be a dedicated control, which is very helpful. That's a great point. Yeah, a lot of flexibility there. Um, can you lock the thermostat screens? Absolutely can. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. So you can lock them with a, you know, pass, you know, either password protect on the 8000 and the prestige and T10. You also have the capability of what I call a semi lockout, which gave that capability where you could preset the um, parameters in the background and then allow them only to maybe adjust one or two degrees in order to be most effective by giving a little bit of control, but not handling the whole, you know, the whole book out really great in like restaurants and stuff like that so you don't have to put the little sign above it's like don't touch our thermostat it looks clean and um it's re it's really nice and you won't need the you know the lock boxes all right sean um do you need a wired sensor for dual fuel so that answer is is no i mean it depends on what thermostat model you have um if you have a t10 given that's got wi-fi built in you can use a wired sensor. However, if you connect it, the T10 to the internet, you will be able to pull the current outdoor temperature conditions from, from the cloud and it'll come down, populate around on a thermostat and I can use that for my balance point for a dual fuel application. If I have a red link thermostat and I'm connected to the internet uh, via the gateway or maybe it's not connected to the internet but it's just red link from the thermostat to the EIM, I could certainly use a wired sensor, um, but like we talked about previously, uh, save on labor, use the Redlink outdoor air sensor. You get five years of battery life out of that. Um, if the batteries were to go, you you're get, get weak, you get a notification, pop in new batteries, everything reconnects automatically, and you can connect up to 16 different systems up with just one sensor. So uh, it really does save on labor. Um, you could do a wired sensor, or certainly if it's a red link model outside of the T10, you can use the, the red link outdoor air sensor. That's great. And then how many IAQ products will a T10 or a Prestige IAQ support? So IAQ, indoor air quality, um, T10, we can utilize the U-contact. Um, we got the U1 terminals to connect physically to a, uh, an additional hardware piece of um, just one IAQ product. And I say hardware because we can do a humidifier, dehumidifier, or ventilator. Just keep in mind, it's just one. However, uh, um, we can connect to a physical humidifier, but yet still do dehumidification by overcooling. So as you mentioned earlier, John, it was like one and a half, if you think of it that way. The upside with a Prestige IAQ, since you're connected to an EIM, I only need two wires at the thermostat head. That's all I need in a wall. I can run anything up to three indoor air quality devices. So that that or statement on the T10, you know, humidifier, dehumidifier, or ventilator becomes an, an and statement on the IQ. I can have all three um, off of one EIM in Prestige IAQ. One thing I'd like to add on the Prestige IAQ is that your ability to run these um, devices very, very efficiently, and you have options of using whether in the case of ventilator, um, the ASHRAE code or set your own based on percentage of time. A lot of flexibility there to get that control to exactly what you're you're looking for and what your prerequisites are. Uh, it's like I said, it's very slick and it's a very user friendly control. Absolutely. Um, so we, John, we've got quite a few questions in the chat that um, would like to, to to answer, and um, so I'll, I'll I'll start by. I provide you some of the questions. Um, yeah, please do. Let's um, let's chat a little bit. Sounds good. So, um, the first one I saw come in was, can a Redlink outdoor air sensor be shared between different thermostats? Um, which I'll just take that one since we we did answer that in the last slide. The sure. answer is we can go with up to sixteen um, different thermostats with one Redlink outdoor air sensor. What I like to add on that too is when you're doing. That's, that's really a cost savings if you're doing it in more sophisticated items where as long as you're within the range, using one saves you a ton of time and money, but also 
in the fact that you won't need one for each one. It's just, it's very helpful and, and, and well thought out. Yep. Um, and here's another one. So the, the wire, the wire saver, the add a wire, um, can that be utilized with Redlink? The answer to that would be no, you wouldn't need it in that situation. Those are for our smart thermostats that all have K terminals. Um, so that's recommended there. But in this case, because both the eight, the, well, the focus pros are all, um, battery operated, the 8,000 can operate on as many wires or as few because it can be both battery operated and 24 volt. And then Prestige requires two wires, um, you know, RNC. Um, it does work with the T10, which is really nice. So we do have a K, K terminal there and that will give you the capability of running RNC. So you can power that thermostat to connect with the Wi-Fi router. Perfect. The only thing I want to add is the Redlink 8000 has a K terminal. Uh, if you're pairing it with an EIM, you don't need that. However, if you're hardwiring your thermostat to the equipment, you, you need common to ener energize the or enable the Redlink. So if I'm using that Redlink outdoor air sensor, I can't run my thermostat off of batteries. So if you're short one conductor, you can use the AdWire. That's an excellent point. Thank you. Yep. Um, and Here's another one, uh, kind of Redlink system geofence. Uh, at the current time, Redlink system, Redlink 2.0 cannot geofence, but it will be able to. We're in the process of migrating. All the Redlinks were on what's called the Total Connect Comfort app. Um, today, the Wi-Fi versions migrate into Honeywell Home. When we finalize that process of bringing those in, then it will be able to geofence. The T10 can geofence today right out of the box. So stay tuned for that, and that that'll be coming shortly. It's a it's a feature that I um, not hype, but really I use in my own personal life, and it's one that uh, is really really effective. So um, we're looking forward to ha adding that to the portfolio. And there's some third party options too, like uh, if this then that. There's you know different integrations that you can use to to kind of have other features added. Um, all right, another question. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, Sean, because yet again, by not being, we don't cocoon ourselves in, in the Honeywell Home product line that, yeah, when there's something we haven't thought of, we do give you that capability. And if you want to add it in, that can be done, you know, very, very easily. Yep. Uh, I'll take this one, John. How can we use the THM 4000R? And, and, uh, and just a refresher, that is our Redlink antenna. And there's a couple purposes that and, and applications you can utilize that in. Um, one certainly would be for zoning. So we can have a HZ322 board or our 432, the HZ432 board, uh, which are Redlink and compatible. If you add that antenna, and I can now hook uh, Redlink thermostats directly to the panel without any physical wiring between the two. Um, so that's one scenario. So if you're using zoning. And another one would be, um, let's say you have a prestige IAQ and you're, maybe you're doing some commercial building and you're having some issues with uh, communication. It's not quite making it. You got a lot of uh, metal in the in the, the structure. It's degrading the signal. Maybe you're going, you know, uh, millions of square foot. Um, the THM 4000 is an antenna, so I can wire that from my EIM and move the antenna closer to the thermostat, uh, utilizing four wires, and they're labeled. They will be labeled A, B, C, and D. So that's the only time we really use th that antenna. So. Um, I've seen in rooftop units, you know, guys mount the EIM, but there's a lot of metal on the rooftop. So maybe they got to drop the antenna below the, the roof decking to make communications happen to the thermostat head. Yeah, I have a great example of that as help. I was actually uh, assisting a, a contractor with a multifamily building that the back corner had, um, you know, um, a cellular tower mounted on the building. So that was the one rooftop we couldn't get to. So basically we ran those wires up the elevator shaft, used the antenna and we were good to go. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility in there. And one thing I recommend, if you do get in these types of things, we have a, a very capable sales force out in the field that are able to help you. Please think, just reach out to us, um, you know, Sean and I or any of our, you know, coworkers, they'll be able to help you through some of these things. Certainly. Uh, hey John, what's the battery life on the T10 wireless sensors? So um, it, it keeps contract. It'll, it'll keep eye on the on the on the level, but we're looking at three years. And I always recommend when you replace them, replace them with good batteries. You know, um, 
decent batteries, um, brand name batteries, you'll be in good shape, but you get three years out of those. Okay, perfect. And here's another one that you, um, you kind of just touched on. Can the Redlink 2.0 with an EIM, so figure Prestige IEQ or the Vision Pro 8000 with the EIM, uh, utilizing the Redlink Internet Gateway, can we get that on the home app or the Honeywell home app, or is it just still strictly the TCC? Today, that one is strictly the TCC, but that will eventually move into, into Honeywell Home. We're, um, hopefully, we're not that far away on that, but that's the last piece. Keep in mind that all of your Wi-Fi versions do now. You can import TCC directly into your Honeywell Home. Okay, great. Um, if I, um, one question was, if I'm utilizing the internet for my outdoor temperature and I lose Wi-Fi, what happens on a dual fuel system? And that's a that's a great question. So we kind of always we revert back to comfort. So if that was to happen, we would revert to whatever the auxiliary um, would be, whether in a case of dual fuel to your um, to your fossil fuel, and it'll run that until it's it's re you know it's, it reestablishes. So that way you're never without. The idea being, if something happens, we don't want you without heat or cooling, just because of the Wi-Fi. So. That's what we do that. So it'll automatically revert back. And then when temp when temperature is reestablished, it'll, it'll pop back into whatever mode it needs to be at the time. Yeah, yeah. So we basically plan for a worst case scenario. We don't know what the outdoor temperature is. So let's give you, you know, the emergency heat where we know it can heat in the worst conditions and, and the mild conditions. Correct. Um, oh, do our thermostats have demand responsibility for utility discounts? That's a fantastic question. I'll take that one, Sean. So the answer to that is yes. In the case of Redlink, the Redlink Internet Gateway needs to be enabled. Of so much, you know, basically, you need to have a rig. If you don't have one, no, it is not. Um, and then, in addition to, you need to opt into those programs. So all of our smart thermostats, in whether it's the Z-Wave or the all the Wi-Fi's, will do it where you can opt in through the app. And in the case of the Redlink ones you would add the gateway and then opt in. But it makes them all eligible for yeah. both Energy Star rebates as well as demand response. Perfect. Yeah, and then when we updated the gateway, that, you know, if you guys are familiar with the, the larger black one, uh, we, we changed it about a year or so ago to a, a smaller white footprint. Um, that one, during the change, we implemented demand response to it as well. Um, if I, John, if I have a, a need for a thermostat in a room where one currently does not exist and there's no wires in the wall, what do we have to offer to, to get that application complete? Okay, well, that's great. So if you're looking at your screen now, the ones that you can do that are is the, the Redlink um, Focus Pro models, whether the 5,000 or six, so depending if you want it to be programmable or non-programmable, the 8,000 will also do it. Um, because that has a battery option. And then Prestige, all you would have to add there is 24 volts. So you don't need to pull the wires necessarily all the way down from the equipment. If you, um, if you had a way of pulling 24 volts and giving it RNC, you could also add there with minimal intrusion as well. So you, you, have, you have a lot of flexibility there, Sean. Perfect. And I'll, I'll take this next one. It's regarding what is the difference between Redlink 2.0 and 3.0? So, um, 3.0 right now is just implemented in our T10 and T10 is a Wi-Fi thermostat and it also has Redlink, which is the, the 3.0 edition. Um, one of the things we did there is we added to enhanced security to the protocol. So Redlink is a very robust, very secure. Um, you know, John can attest to this when we've got some contractors that have jobs in banks and things they'll never allow a Wi-Fi thermostat in there because um, that's more of an open protocol. So when we tell them we'll use Redlink and with a gateway, it's a lot, uh, way more secure and, and they tend to go with that. 3.0, because we have a Wi-Fi chip in the thermostat with a Redlink chip, we added additional security to the 3.0. And there's different things with range as well as um, we can ping different um, sent, you know, thermostats the sensor uh, at different times. So if you look at like the Redlink 2.0, it was, hey, I added three indoor air sensors. Hey, they're going to average all the time, regardless if somebody's in that room or not. With with the newer version, we can now um, select when do we want to to look at this sensor versus another one, and do we want to average these two for 
this block of time versus, you know, maybe these other three for this block of time. So more flexibility, different range and more security. And, and uh, John, here's one for you that, um, that came in, I guess on one of the slides, you were men mentioning a, a 6320 um, when reading the model number. So uh, could you provide a little bit of insight on how the nomenclature works for our thermostats? Well, that's a good question. So um, I'll run through it here. So using an example, let's use the red link focus pro since you mentioned the 6320. So if you look there, you see a TH. So TH stands for trade home. So that's why you know that this is for our channel that we all live in. If it started with an R, we, it would be retail. And then the six or eight or nine is the series number. So our focus pros are six. The Vision Pro 8000s are eight. And then Prestige is nine. And then there's your heats and your cools. So in the case of the 6320, there's three heats and two cools. And then the zero or one before the R is tells you whether it has humidity control or not. So the 8,000, when we were talking about the 8,000, there was an 8320 and an 8321R. One did indoor air quality control and the other did not have that capability. R is red link. What's great about the R in the middle is all you can basically line up your accessories correctly and know that you have the correct one because they will also have an R in the middle. So in the case of a sensor, we have two models of indoor sensor, a C7089R or C7989U. The R works with the red link, the U is the wired one. And then the remaining four is for us and you only really need to worry about them. Perfect. Um, so the, the next question I'd like to take, um, my the, the question is, my understanding is uh, that Residio only upstages on droop, but will not upstage on a rise in temperature. Um, when a homeowner is cold and raises the thermostat a couple of degrees, it takes longer than usual um, in certain scenarios for a heat pump to uh, get up to temperature. Is this the case? And if so, how do we overcome this? So um, we want to remain comfortable and efficient. So in the past and in, in certain models and applications still currently with a heat pump system, we it, if we manually adjust that set point, let's say increase it by four degrees, that doesn't in necessarily impact the droop um, or affect, the droop won't kick in because the thermostat didn't, the, ther the room temperature didn't droop by itself. We manually created that by increasing the set point. So we will still run the heat pump. And if we see a time to temperature rise um, and we're making progress with the heat pump, it, it'll stay with the heat pump mode. That being said, the Prestige IEQ, we've recently changed and added some software options to, um, to, to change that algorithm. So uh, we've had like, you know, you know, maybe they got a summer home um, or a beach house and they're going in down in the middle of winter. Uh, it was set back 10 degrees, they ramp it up um, and the heat pump would run a while to get to that set point. So we do have a, um, a hold off timer so we can hold off the, the upstaging um, for maybe 30 minutes and then it'll kick into uh, emergency heat and get to the temperature quicker. Um, another way around that, if you're using a thermostat that's not the prestige, you can just simply put the unit into emergency heat and then go up and down. Um, but again, we did add that software capability to the prestige IAQ. Yeah, thank you, Sean. That's, those are the things where we really get in the nitty gritty on these things. And please, yet again, don't be afraid to ask those questions to us both at our, um, we have a technical service department that you can call into and then also reach out to your reps. They'll be able to help you through that as well. Cool. Um, here's just a couple more. Um, okay. There's two from, from the same gentleman. So we'll, we'll bundle these together. If there are multiple commercial buildings that an owner has, can he use just um, one portal to log in and see all their different buildings? I'll go ahead and take that one. The answer is yes on that. They can see um, both from the TCC app, they can see their locations in addition to on their on their laptop and they can actually schedule as well. Um, they, they, they can do scheduling multiple buildings all in the same same thing. They will toggle in and out. It's more set up for, for that way and they have some customizable things, but yes, that can be done. 
Great. And then just to add on to that is um, if you were to have any alerts, whether it be, you know, not maintaining temperature or maybe humidity is too high, it will um, actually show up underneath that location. So you can div div divide it up by locations and then you click on that and it'll show you all the thermostats within that location. That's correct. I'll take this one, which is from the same gentleman. Um, also, is there a thermostat that has two heat, two cool, hot gas, reheat control, remote space temperature and humidity, and supply air sensing? The answer to that is yes. Uh, sounds like it's a commercial application with hot gas reheat control. You would have to set the thermostat to commercial, and you could use the, the TH8321R1001, so that'd be the Vision Pro 8000. Uh, the Prestige IAQ or the Wi-Fi 8000 and set it all to commercial. You'll have hot gas reheat options for dehumidification. Um, however, with the Wi-Fi model, you won't be able to do remote space temperature and humidity. You could just do uh, remote space temp, but you have to run a wire to it. But you can also uh, wire in supplier sensors. So that, that would cover those. Um, and then, John, here's, um, we've got a couple more. Okay. What's the difference between the EIM and the ERM? So the main difference is, so the EIM is the equipment interface module. That is an internal, think of it inside. You'd wire that down at the equipment and that is becomes a host and you can then add all of your accessories to. The ERM, the equipment remote module is for outdoor use. And actually, actually for also, you can use it for relocating an equipment. It's purely an accessory. So uh, the ERM can be used for, I'll give you a couple of examples, uh, changing out from an air AC unit to a heat pump, okay? You can use the ERM there as giving it to, to take the two wires to being RNC, converting them there, and then communicating back wirelessly to either an 8000 or the EIM. And that, that would be a labor savings because you don't need to run those wire sets. And particularly if it's, an, you know, um, sometimes that's not always easily done. This allows you to do it very uninvasively there. You can also use it for ERMs can be used for rooftops and then also boilers as well. The EIM is basically become is we use for all the other things that you can do. Adding in an indoor air quality terminals, adding additional heats and cools, all that stuff. But the real advantage is there is you're doing all your wiring right at the equipment and then speaking wirelessly to all of your accessories, whether it's a thermostat, sensors, outdoor sensors, all the different stuff like that. So think of it as the EIM is the brains and then the ERM is your ability to take that outside. Perfect. And it is yeah. waterproof. Great point. Yeah, you can mount it on, you know, next to your disconnect uh, for the outdoor unit. And one of the other, uh, you know, we'll do just uh, three more questions. One was, can you add an ERM to a Prestige to make the outdoor unit system wireless? And the answer is yes. You can do that up to a, uh, a two-stage um, heat pump or straight AC. And um, another question is, do we have a wireless line volt thermostat uh, that can connect to the internet? Uh, I'll take that one. Um, yes, it's called eConnect. So we do have a wireless line volt thermostat. You can add a gateway to it. It's um, got a, a receiver um, down at the actual like line volt baseboard. The thermostat's wireless and you can add the gateway to, to get online. And then the last question, John, um, before we uh, you know, wrap up is um, what, uh, I'm looking here. Will the 8,000 thermostat that is doing humidity control be able to do frost protection with an outdoor air sensor? The answer is yes on that. So you, you'll have that option. Um, it's a, unlike the T10, it tends a little bit easier, but you go in there, you'll um, basically answer the questions and it'll be able to do that. That is correct, it will. Perfect. Um, wanted to thank everybody for the questions. Um, you know, there's a, a couple left in the chat, uh, but for time reasons, um, to respect the time slot we have, if you could reach out to your local Residio rep. They'd be more than happy to, to answer those for you. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jamie. Yeah, thank you, Sean, I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for attending today and Jamie will take us away.
Thanks so much. And, and thank you all to of our attendees today for your engagement on this topic. You know, these were great questions. We, we've had a handful that we weren't able to get to in our time allotted. And we're going to do one better. We are going to uh, send the questions that maybe did not get answered to your sales rep and have them follow up with you so that you can get the answers to your questions that you so thoughtfully put into the Q&A uh, for us today. And I want to say thank you again to John for the the great overview on our red link thermostats and accessories and Sean for jumping in and and answering these great questions and on your screen here you're going to see a uh, an image of our new online training portal uh, that is now available at our Residio Pro website. We really value our relationships with our contractor and our distributor partners and training is an important part of providing more information to all of you and we wanted to make you aware that recently we launched an online digital training portfolio where we are publishing in-depth technical and sales training for all of our customers and you can access this training by visiting visiting the training page on our Residio Pro website. And the first time that you attempt to visit the, the online training catalog, you are gonna be asked to create an account. And going forward, you'll log in with your training account details to access these trainings. Right now, we've got about 10 combustion trainings in that online learning catalog right now. We've also got a handful of humidification, technical and sales trainings as well. And we encourage you to log in, enroll and take those trainings as you have time throughout your week. We are adding more trainings every month to this online training catalog. So be sure to check back often uh, for the most up-to-date training modules. As a preview, we are getting ready to launch some T10 technical and sales training modules in the next couple of weeks. So look for that information to go into the online training portal. And then also, if you are a Residio Perks member, you can receive training credit when you enroll and take those online training training courses as well. We're really excited to add this online training catalog to our training offerings for all of you. And then as a reminder, we are going to continue to offer the customer webinar series twice each month. So make sure that you join us on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month for these training sessions. Make sure you visit residio.com backslash webinars and underneath the uh, HVAC and the plumbing tabs, you can find more information and sign up for our upcoming sessions. And also as a reminder, we do record each of these trainings. So you can refine, you can find those recordings of previous sessions on the website underneath that webinar recordings tab. And then one last reminder to our contractors who maybe did not include your Nate ID on your registration form and you would like credit for attending today's live session, go ahead and send, and send us an email with your first name, your last name, your Nate ID number to homes.university at residio.com within one week from today's live session. And we will go ahead and submit that information to Nate on your behalf. And then two final things to note, uh, before we end today, you are going to be prompted to complete a survey regarding our webinar session today. Please take a few moments to provide us with your feedback on today's training that you participated in. We are very interested in hearing your feedback on today's session, and we also use that feedback to help us create future training. So your, your input is important. If you have suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, go ahead and include that information in your feedback survey. And finally, you are going to receive an email from us in a few days that includes some follow-up information uh, that covers all the products that we reviewed today, as well as a link to the website for information on our future webinars as well. We look forward to having you join us for our next training session on February 9th at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we are going to be covering our universal part strategy and also give you a look into our source combustion training as well. Thank you all for joining us for today's Residio webinar session. Have a great day, everyone.